And here we are ready for the first power up from uh, the AC input. As you can see you've got the AC input coming along here. The easiest way to hook this up to the board was just to use the inline line filter that came with the K2001. It's just got the right header on it and everything. I've got the heat sink down there uh, on a temporary heat sink on the uh, big resistor, the 470 ohm resistor and that MOSFET on the pre-regulator there. And as you can see here is the primary to the transformer hooked up here. I've just got a couple of multimeter probes across the winding that we're powering at 240 volts just so I can monitor that. I've got the secondary coming in here. I've also got the digital board hooked up. As you can see you've got the small ribbon cable, it's probably just out of sight actually. Small ribbon cable connecting it to the digital board. I'm uh, monitoring the 5 volt supply on that digital board just on this meter over here just so I can see what's going on. And I've actually got a heat sink on that 5 volt regulator on the digital board just to mimic the bottom plate underneath the digital board that regulator is bolted to. So multimeters at the back, I've got the AC input coming from a variable transformer. I've got the AC voltage across the transformer primary just so that I can see what's going on. If the pre-regulator is working, I should see this voltage here being slightly less than the AC input. I'm also measuring a positive BS supply. There is actually an unregulated uh, DC supply from the secondary on the transformer. It actually goes through a little voltage doubler and on the schematic diagram it does actually say it should be between 34 and 38 volts, something like that. So I just thought it because it's something I've never monitored previously, I've never tested previously because I've never hooked up that secondary, I just thought it was worth monitoring that. And this uh, meter at the end here is just across the 5 volt supply on the digital board. So what I'm going to do, I've got my variable transformer hooked up, I'm just going to wind the voltage up slowly so that I can keep an eye on the various supplies. I'm not just going to whack in 240 volts and hope for the best. So let's go. Okay, let's just uh, get power going. And I'll just wind it up reasonably slowly. There we go, we've got... And now it's 60 and 60 volts there. BS is at 7.5. And you can see the... 5 volt regulator starting to work now. We're at 113 volts on both, 16 volts and 2.7, it's coming up. And we're at 200 volts, we've got 5 volts on, on the digital board. BS is at 33 volts, that's good. We're now at 240 volts input and very crucially the transformer primary is at 220. Looks like that pre-regulator is working and the positive VS is at 36 volts. It's perfect right smack in the middle of the range there and I've got 5 volts on the digital board. Everything's looking good so far. So I'll turn off the power now. And what I'm going to do now is went on for a few seconds. I just want to go around everything, make sure all the heat sinks are okay. They're not burning hot or anything like that. Resistor on the pre-regulator is just starting to get a little bit warm, very, very slightly, just above uh, ambient temperature there. And nothing is hot at all. This 5 volt regulator down here, very, very slightly warm, that's to be expected. Everything's perfect. Now you will notice I didn't hook up the display board. I don't need it for full power up. And I just thought, well, we'll not take any chances, we'll just power up without it to start with. But, I think I'm actually ready for that display board now. I've had it up to 240 volts and everything looked okay. And I'll plug in the display board 
once I verified the DC supplies are okay on the analog board. So I'm going to power it up again and this time I'm going to measure the test points at the side of the board here. The plus and minus 15 and the plus and minus 8 volts and the plus 5 volts there. I'm going to measure them just to make sure they're okay. Okay, let's get back up to 240 volts again on the input. That's good enough. So plus 5 volts, perfect. Plus 15, perfect. Minus 15, perfect. This should be minus 8, oh, minus 7, probably okay. And plus 8, that's plus 7.5, that's okay as well. Okay, I think I'm ready now to plug in the display board. So let's switch power off. Okay, and we're ready for power up. Again, this time I'm not going to bother winding the power supply up manually. i am just got it set to 235 volts or something like that. And we'll just put power in. And yes, we've got something on the display there. Yes! And we've got something on the display. Wow! Let me hook up a voltage source. Right, I've got a voltage source hooked up off camera there. Now I notice it did say calibration lost, but we knew that. So when I put in this voltage here into the DC input of the meter, it's not going to read right. I just wanted to see whether it was actually working. It would vary with the DC voltage input. So we'll give that a bash now. So. We're all hooked up, I'm set to 10 volts, so let's put power in. It does take a calibration data lost. 10.1 <laughs> volts, let me put it down to 5 volts. <laughs> the input's working, I can't believe it. Wow. So perhaps the only problem I've got right now could be I just need to recalibrate the meter. Wow. Now as you can see on the multimeters my AC inputs 247. Let me put that down a touch. 241 versus 225. Now let me just push the AC input down a little and let's see what the transformer primary does. And look at that, it stays pretty much stable, even though I've reduced the AC input by 20 odd volts, it only really dropped about 2 volts. Yep, I'm now coming down too far. Now the pre-regulator now is turned off completely, so it's uh, probably at the minimum end now of that AC input. So it seems to start kicking in. At, let's see, 238 volts, you saw it kick in there. It did take a few seconds to, for it to happen, but that will be the integrator as per my last video. The integrator does take a little bit of time to actually toggle that uh, digital output on the pre-regulator. But that's looking great. Well, what's next? Well, actually, what I think I will do is build the boards back into their chassis. I can't see me having to work on the undersides of the boards to, to fix any further faults. Um, possibly just the top sides and I can get to both of those boards from the chassis, either side of the chassis. So I think I will actually go ahead and uh, reassemble the meter. Okay, here's the chassis. Let's reassemble it and then I'll come back. Okay, and that's it reassembled. As you can see, there's the analog board, the A to D, and everything's cabled up nicely. Transformers in. And the other side, the 
digital board all cabled up and the rear of the unit there and the front panel now I did actually have to use the donor chassis believe it or not because the posts on the back of the unit here are a smaller diameter on the donor chassis compared to the original chassis so because I'm using the donor analog board and these tails here are soldered to the donor board they wouldn't fit onto the posts on my original chassis so I had to disassemble it again and then go and uh, and get the donor chassis assembled but it's in perfect condition as well there's no problem there whatsoever but uh, just nice to note those uh, little differences there I've still got to put in the uh, hex nuts etc for some of the connectors and I've still got to put in the big cover the conductive cover there I'll put that on later after I've powered up and after I've sh made sure it's all working okay and there of course is all the components that I'd removed off the analog board uh, for that uh, voltage switching etc I find it quite funny actually that somebody someday might get a hold of this meter and maybe use it and open it up and go what on earth's going on down here but I find that a little bit funny but that's just me so let's power it up okay here we go one thing I should have done is maybe change out the fan on this unit here because this is the donor chassis after all and it is quite dusty so I'll uh, change out that fan later on I suspect it's probably going to be a little bit noisy and the fans running there and we've got power up and the only error that's coming up there if I saw it right was just the calibration had been lost okay it seems to be powering up okay let me put the analog cover on now and there we go certainly got a quieter fan now well there's the Keithley 2001 with the case back on and I think I'm ready to start doing some self tests there is a number of self tests I can run on the front panel there to test out all the hardware etc and of course I've still got the recalibration to do but uh, I think that's enough for this series of videos actually um, I'll not bore you with the calibration and the self tests but uh, I have to say I have absolutely really enjoyed this repair I wish I could get more of these uh, mammoth repairs uh, on the workbench uh, rather than uh, your normal just fix an odd component here or there I really like getting my teeth into it however I must say as well this would never have happened if it wasn't for the donation of the second unit because I really needed uh, the working microcontroller on the front panel there and the analog board of course which helped me no end in getting the unit up sooner rather than later it would have been quite a laborious process to change out all those ICs on that analog board which I was prepared to do I have to say uh, I just like doing these kind of repairs I'd rather not just stick it in a box and uh, uh, forget about it so that's it as I said it's a series of six videos if you want to go back and if you haven't seen the previous five they will be on my uh, channel and I'll just finally put a shout out if you have your own test equipment that's maybe faulty and you can't repair it or don't want to repair it and would like to donate it to the channel individuals or companies alike please get in touch I would really love to get my teeth into more like this Thanks for watching.